Welcome to part two of Paradigms, featuring the Terry Family Band. We're talking about their new record, Hometown Tragedies. Let's continue now with my conversation with the Terrys, Jim, Graham, and Clark. Your dad comes to you with these songs that are all message songs, great social import, really. And sometimes, you know, in families, there are dynamics. Do you always love what your dad brings you? How does that, how does that go? He'll be the first one to tell you that I don't love everything that he brings me. It kind of brings up how our relationships in many ways are kind of different than traditional father-son relationships. And a lot of that was brought about by the passing of our mom, because we had to change how we saw each other and change how we interact together uh, and support each other during that time. And that was a transformative experience for us. And those changes in our relationships have continued. And in a way that is different, but I think is still very positive. So I, I don't have any hesitation about approaching new songs with direct feedback. And, you know, sometimes it's, it's obvious that a song's great and I can just vibe on it. And then sometimes I just, I'm just like, I just don't understand what you're trying to say. And so sometimes that'll turn into a conversation and, and I'll be like, oh, that's what you're trying to say. Well, you need to, this distracts from that. Maybe you can focus on this a little bit more, but I don't go much further than that. Like I, I don't, I never get into like rewriting lyrics or, or that it's more for me, just does it hang together? Does the message work? You know, the, the kids often say that I have this DNA in my music that goes back decades from the time when I was listening to music as a kid and Peter, Paul and Mary, or even before that, when you can get into some of the real, what I call a mighty wind kind of um, folk music, the new Christy minstrels and that kind of thing. And, and of course I take great offense to that and, <clears throat> but it's there and I'm always fighting, you know, to that uh, so that I don't have those sounds. So in that review that um, I sent you Baruch um, from American highways, the, 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 in the first paragraph, he said, they sometimes sound like the Kingston Trio. And that took me right back to not wanting to sound like that. And here in a, the very first review we ever got, he basically <laughs> was saying we do. <laughs> Which is funny because the first song he taught us, all boys, all the boys, all three of us on the guitar was Hang Down Your Head, Tom Dooley by Kingston Trio. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that old timey quality in here is, I think, great. And mixed with the modern that Graham was talking about. I, it really works musically. When you all play, you know, and your brother was talking about the age of the audience and the sort of the demographic, but when you all do play out, I know it probably hasn't been much lately. What happens? What is the response in the room? What do you hear from the audience or see happening in the room when you're playing these songs with this beautiful music and these powerful ideas in them? <laughs> I don't know if you want my answer to this one. You know, people see the family dynamic and the sibling rivalry. And you know, <laughs> I think a lot of and I think that is true because, I mean, really, we, we've got to be honest here. We have really only played in Napa. OK, and we have a lot of family friends here and they've known us since before I even knew how to create a memory <laughs> and hold one. So I, I think there is a lot of just like, wow, this this Terry family is still <laughs> doing this. But now it's like original music. I, I know that there are people who have come to our concerts and they have a memory of us with the three of us and our little fiddles and matching polo shirts and skunk hats playing dead skunk in the middle of the road in downtown Napa. <laughs> You know, I think there's a lot of that going on, but I think there's also just a new kind of like respect behind it because of the nature of the music that my dad has been inspired to uh, to write. And uh, I think they they noticed that he's, you know, really putting himself in a very uh, vulnerable and scary position. You know, it's not easy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I mean, the other thing about us playing live is Graham and I as adults have played a huge amount of music together separately from Terry family, from rock music to the Irish stuff, to bluegrass, 
And so we have a connection. We kind of know what the other person's going to do in many cases. And, and not just because we've rehearsed together, but because we've done so many things together and have heard the other person do so many things that we, we have a, a real mental connection where he can just look at me and I kind of know what's going to happen or where I should go. Um, and if I do the same thing, he knows I'm about to do a thing. And he probably knows what that already is. And so that's a fun thing to do live. And I'm not sure the audience totally like understands it completely because, you know, people will say things like, oh, the sibling rivalry. There's no sibling rivalry. <laughs> like, this is not a thing. No, I'm talking <laughs> about like the banter and stuff that goes on in between. But, right. you know, yeah. but th there's definitely, you know, when something's honest and yeah. when a band is tight. And you know when it's the when the glue's working together, you just know it, and you don't have to explain it. It's just something that you, you feel, and you you just understand when you see it and when you hear it. I think people do like seeing the family thing up there because you know we're all about the same size. We all kind of look alike. We have the same the same mannerisms that you know, and all of that is just right there for everybody to see. And and people really like that you know, seeing that dynamic up on stage. It's a good thing. I hope you're enjoying my conversation with Jim and Clark and Graham Terry and their music from the new record, Hometown Tragedies. Here are a couple of songs that we just spoke about. The walls stand on and on. And after that, we'll hear Take Your Gun Away. Mississippi Delta and a boy named Till The water flows muddy Tallahatchie River Fire in the cane bray, crickets in the trees Floating down the river, may he rest in peace He was a fine boy, do tell his soul's deliver And the mama cried out And the mama wailed long and Central broad, Bobo down, citified child from Chicago town. Mama says son is different down in Mississippi. Bobo stepped in Brian's grocery store. Pretty woman standing on the splinter floor. The owner's wife, hello young man, what can I do with for? Fat back, lucky strikes, chew and rum. Howdy, Mrs. Bryant, can I buy some gum? I got two pennies, my eyes are on that blackjack bin. He sashayed to the counter, reached into a can, handed her the money, but he grazed her hand. She said it just ain't right for a color to touch a white girl's skin. And the mama cried out, and the mama wailed long and loud. And the window's gone The roof caved in But the walls stand on and on Mr. Bryant pounded on Bobo's door Grabbed him by the hair Tossed him on the floor Of his pickup truck On dark fear road In a southern moon Tied him like a farm hog Shot him in the head Wrapped an old gin fan around his neck Then threw him in the Tallahatchie River It only took an hour for the twelve of them Whiter than white, all of them men To declare that Mr. Bryant was fully innocent Pine box bouncing on the northbound train Mama took Bobo to the church on state she 
opened up the cast so the whole damn world could see. And the mama cried out, and the mama wailed long and loud. The paint is cracked and the window's gone. The roof caved in, but the walls stand on. Cry our tears, 
tunes, raise our hands, take a stand, shrug, and then we do it all again. And we bow our heads, cry our tears, raise our hands, take a stand, shrug, and then we do it all again. And we bow our heads, cry our tears, raise our hands, take a stand, shrug, and then we do it all again. That one's called Take Your Gun Away. Before that, we heard The Walls Stand On and On, the Terry Family Band from their new record, Hometown Tragedies. You're listening to Paradigms from Paradigms.life, and we'd love to hear your feedback on this episode with the Terry Family Band. Please leave a comment and give us a like if you like what you're hearing. Now here's the final part of my conversation with Jim, Clark, and Graham Terry. Do you want to play out more and outside of your home community? That's something that needs to be run by the Terry family band board of directors, I think. I mean, my, you know, my kids have careers. You know, they have wives, they have girlfriends, grandchildren. I have grandchildren. I mean, all of those things are important things. So um, it would certainly be nice to go out on some, you know, very defined mini tours you know, that kind of thing. But, um, you know, we obviously have to get through this pandemic and we're a ways away from that, I I think. But, you know, what's important to me is that people hear this music because I do, I do stand behind the music. I think it's good music. And I think we do a good job. And, um, and so, you know, we were introduced to Art Minius and he took, he took on our music after, after um, hearing it. And um, even though we had technically released the music to friends and family a year before, which is going a little backwards, you know, doing it that way. So he took it on. So it's really been fun to get reactions from people across the country. I recently won a song contest at a at the Will McLean <laughs> Music Festival in uh, in Florida. So now there's that con- little connection that was mercy in the storm. When you write songs, at least I feel this way. When I'm writing songs, particularly songs like this, I want people to hear them. That's what they're for. Well, here's a couple of more songs from the record that we could talk about. One of them is The Walls Stand On and On, which you've mentioned. And the other one is Take Your Gun Away. Tell, tell us about those songs. Well, there's actually a connection between the two, and, and that is um, Roseanne Cash. Graham and I went to a Roseanne Cash concert in here in Napa, and I wasn't going to miss that. And um, she started talking about her time traveling in Mississippi in the area of money Mississippi because uh, for various things she, she talked she talked about the vortex of music things that have happened there historically it's where Robert the area where Robert Thompson lived and her father Johnny Cash um, spent time and lived in that area and of course we're all familiar with the song the ode to Billy Joe and and the uh, you know whatever was thrown off the Tallahatchie Bridge and that captured the world really in 1967 and even though that's a fictional story that that story took place in that area she talked about all these things and of course she talked about Emmett Till and anyway the her discussion just captivated me and then coincidentally I, I came home that night after the the concert and there was a, a a New York Times mini documentary like a seven minute long documentary on the very subject of Emmett Till's murder and in the beginning of it, there was a little lick of music, just a mysterious lick of music as as the camera was probably a drone was panning over the Tallahatchie Bridge and the, and looking down the Tallahatchie River. And I listened to that at about midnight and that little lick of music in the beginning turned in ultimately to how that song begins. And, and I was off and running with, you know, with that song, but it was, so I, I legitimately can say and i'm proud to say it that it was because of roseanne cash that that i wrote that song similarly with respect to take your gun away which really doesn't say in the in the music take your we're going to take your gun away it says look don't be afraid i'm not going to take your gun away but we need to do something here that song was inspired again by roseanne cash who wrote an op-ed for the new york times imploring roots music musicians to stand up and say something about what was going on um, and that was after the Las Vegas hotel, you know, massacre. Roseanne Cash is so amazing. I, I have to say I had a very brief 
email interaction with her after Katrina, I was at a clinic in New Orleans for six months. I work in the field of psychology and she somehow got my email address and wrote to me and said, how can I help? And uh, she put a, a donation thing for the Common Ground Health Clinic on her webpage for a while. So thank you, Roseanne Cash, um, for more inspiration. So Graham, you are responsible for the production. How, how was it making this record? How did that go? Like any album, it's it's definitely a process, and I, it just takes a, a long time to figure out what the the method and flow is going to be. It was determined early on that we definitely wanted to have a bit of a kind of a live foundational feel. So I had my dad over and our bassist over a couple times a week, and we would try to just lay down rhythm tracks with a click. And I would sometimes chug along too, just to add some more uh, vibe to these. Um, these rhythm tracks that we were doing that we were kind of using as templates to, to me uh, as an engineer and a recordist and a mixer those that's just always the hardest part if, if you don't have that first that main foundation rhythm part down the way you want it to be you don't have anything you know you can't fake that you can't fix that it's got to be rock solid right at the bottom we were doing this months before the pandemic started and so we managed to find time to get clark to come over and we would try to track as many of his mandolin parts as possible just get as much information down as possible try to get some of his vocal harmony parts down and then the pandemic hit and thankfully we we had all these rhythm tracks down and, and my school got shut down and then summer hit so i spent like most of the summer just like by myself <laughs> in my studio developing every one of these tracks and like working with the backup vocals adding the violin parts maybe the wanted to double the violin part uh adding the electric guitar parts refining the guitar solos just doing everything i can to to make it sound still like a band try to keep it honest and not overly produced which you know you can go down a rabbit hole with that type of stuff especially when you're working by yourself and not socializing with anybody for several months at a time <laughs> <laughs> but that was always the goal. It was to keep it keep it honest to what what we can sound like in, in, in a live setting. Yeah, there are some extra little tricks going on in there, but that's part of the nature of of making an album. But we always wanted it to be an acoustic album with some Americana and some rock in there a little bit. My goal was to always just just keep it honest. Well, it really works. I mean, the sound is great. Uh, I grew up in Vermont listening to people like Vassar Clements and Paul Asbell and all these kinds of people and, you know, lots of live music. And this just feels like, you know, I can imagine I'm sitting on a hillside with a couple thousand folks and y'all are out front playing this. And that's what it would sound like. That's awesome. <laughs> it's really cool. We really wanted it to sound like we think we sound when we play live. You can add a little bit of the surreal just a little bit of the surreal with a studio and still keep that feel. But, you know, like my mandolin parts has zero overdubbing. It's just one mandolin line, the chunk, it's all there. There's one song where I, for a brief moment, I doubled a snare hit chop and, and that's it. And same thing with, with the guitar parts. And it's just, that's super important to get that right vibe. I was so happy to get this and to listen to it. I'm always looking for musicians who have something to say and who are really inspired because, I mean, that's what art is for, right? For all of us to be inspired by it, to express what inspires us and to be inspired by other people. And so I hope lots of people listen to this because I think it's got a lot of food for the soul. Well, thank you, Baruch. That was, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's really nice. Thank you. Jim, Graham, and Clark Terry the Terry Family Band. Thank you so much for being on the show and talking with me. I really enjoyed our conversation and I'm really enjoying your record, Hometown Tragedies. These are songs about the human condition and about some of the human tragedies that we can do something about. I hope you'll check out the whole record. If you'd like to know more about them, hear the rest of the record and see some videos of their performance, the website is terryfamilyband.com, T-E-R-R-Y, familyband.com. I hope you'll check them out. 
And if you enjoyed this episode of Paradigms, I hope you'll also check out our archives at the Paradigms website, paradigms.life, and in iTunes, and wherever else you find your podcasts. Paradigms also has a Patreon campaign going to pay the bills. It's at patreon.com slash paradigms. I hope you'll check it out and become a patron. I really enjoyed talking with the Terrys, and I think their music is both beautiful and fun and serious. I hope you'll check it out. But let's let the word for the week be family. And I don't just mean our blood kin. I mean family. What is family to you? Who is your family? Maybe it's everyone. Maybe it's just a few. How do you know? How do you recognize when someone's family? Family means a lot of different things to different people, but let's just let that be the word for the week. Notice family. I'm going to leave you with one more track from the Terry family's new record, Hometown Tragedies. This one's called Come On Home. All right. Thanks so much for listening. Baruch signing off for Paradigms. We'll be back next time with more inspired, inspiring people. Until then, be well. In the years you've been gone We'll have a beer By the redbud tree Before you fly away Like a honeybee Friends may come And friends will go Say the word Forever and always You know it's not quite so They'll hang around The red bud tree Then fly away Like a honeybee Come on home Come on home Lay your head and heart and rest your tired bones My honey bee, you'll find the key Still in your heart you'll see Come on home Lovers too Will play their part Bring you gifts and sweet things Of course they'll break your heart Make love to you by the red bud tree Then fly away Like a honeybee Come on home Come on home Lay your head and heart And rest your tired bones My honeybee, you'll find the key Still in your heart you'll see Come on Time.
tired bones My honey bee, you'll find the key Still in your heart you'll see Come on home My honey bee, you'll find the key Still in your heart you'll see Come on home Just come on home.